Hey guys, today we are checking out the best Intel Pentium 3. It is the Pentium 3S 1.4 GHz with the Duality Core. This is one of those end of an era type retro parts that are extremely popular with the community. There's just something about having the absolute best of something and the Pentium 3S is a great example of such a product. Now often the concept of value goes right out of the window if we look at parts such as the Pentium 4 Extreme Edition, the Athlon FX57 or something like a GeForce 3 Ti 500, common sense and sensible spending gets replaced by emotions and the desire to own a significant part of computing history. Such parts are not just expensive and harder to obtain, but they often only offer marginal performance improvements and can come with compatibility issues like needing a very powerful cooler, excessive power requirements or a suitable motherboard. But what about the Pentium 3S? Well that's what we're going to find out in this video. Performance is the first thing we will be looking at and for this we have a little processor roundup. The Pentium 3S with the Duality Core runs at 1.4 GHz, 133 MHz FSB and has a whopping 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache. Next up we have the Pentium 3 with the Coppermine Core running at 1 GHz, 133 MHz FSB and 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. And we also got a Celeron. This one runs at 1.1 GHz with a 100 MHz FSB and 128 kilobytes of level 2 cache. But there are other things to consider beyond pure performance. The Pentium 3S has a few special requirements that can drive up the cost of such a system even more. We're using a Duality compatible motherboard with the Socket 370 and the Intel 815 chipset. We have some fast, crucial 256MB of PC 133SD RAM with cache latency of 2. For sound we're using a Yamaha WaveForce 192XG for storage, a ID 120GB Seagate Barracuda 5 and a DVD optical drive. Powering everything is a Corsair VX450 power supply. We are running Windows 98, we've got the Intel chipset drivers installed, Nvidia and Yamaha drivers, DirectX 8 and we are good to go. To make sure the benchmark results are usable, we got to make sure that we aren't GPU limited by our graphics card. So we're going with a very fast video card, it is the GeForce FX 5900 XT, a pretty high-end video card that works great with Windows 98. Let's have a look at some benchmark results and we also have power draw figures. So to make sure that the video card isn't holding back the system, I just did like a sample run on the Pentium 3S, 1.4 GHz at all the resolutions and you can see here we're getting the same result, so the video card is not holding back anything. Moving on to uh, Dragon, this is an interesting benchmark, I've seen this in the past that with higher, with lower resolutions the performance goes down, but once again we are not GPU limited. In Quake 2 we can see that at 1024 by 768 the video card is holding us back a little bit, but not at the lower resolutions. And the last game, MDK2, once again we just have uh, one FPS less at the 1024 by 768 resolution. So I've decided to go with 640 by 480. That will ensure that the video card is not holding us back. So let's have a look at the first result, 3D Mark 99 Max. And look at that, the Pentium 3S 1.4 GHz, miles ahead of the competition. The Pentium 3 1000, 7450 and the Celeron is quite a bit behind. In 3D Mark 2000, definitely the highlight is the Celeron not doing very well, but this is more of an outliner. In the other benchmarks, it doesn't perform that poorly. And once again, the Pentium 3S are way ahead of the competition. In 3D Mark 2001 SE, we can see a similar picture. We're going from around 7,000 points for the Pentium 3 1000 to almost 10,000. So that's a huge upgrade once again. In Expendable we can see the same thing, the Celeron and the Pentium 3 processors are holding back the video card and we are falling short of the 60 FPS mark, whereas the Pentium 3 uh, Duality, yeah, 80 FPS, 83 to be exact, so that's very good. In Dragon we can see the same thing, both the Celeron and the Pentium 3 with the Coppermine core are not even able to reach 50 or 60 FPS, whereas the Duality has no trouble and we're getting 72 FPS. Quake 2 is a piece of cake for this machine, but look at that, we're still getting a higher performance with the Pentium 3S. 
And here we got MDK2 and look at the numbers. We're getting around 100 FPS for the Pentium 3, but 160 for the Trello team. That's like a 60% boost, so very impressive. But even the Celeron and the Pentium 3, we still get playable frame rates in this game. And we have another benchmark result. Quake 2 lets you use a software render. So this is purely being processed on the CPU. 67.4 FPS compared to 47.6. So if you uh, like the look of the software render and you want silky smooth 60 FPS, then the uh, Pentium 3S will not let you down. And here we have some power draw results. So the blue bar is idle sitting on the desktop and the orange bar is peak that was running uh, 3D Mark 2001, the nature test that has proven to be one of the more demanding tests. And look at that, the Twilight team draws less power. So not only is it faster, it draws less power. And that's because um, it's manufactured on a smaller process and is more efficient. So looking at these graphs, in terms of performance, well, the Pentium 3S is absolutely worth it. It dominates the charts and it's basically in a different league altogether. So now let's talk about compatibility and pricing. The first issue is finding a suitable motherboard. When Intel launched the Trello Team Pentium 3S, the chipsets received a new revision. It doesn't matter if your motherboard has an Intel or a VIA chipset, it has to be of the newer revision that is compatible with the Pentium 3S. Because most motherboards have a chipset cooler, identifying such a board can be a bit challenging. Sellers that know what they're doing, well, they will go out of the way to mention Trellatin compatibility as this is something people are searching for and usually justifies a higher price as well. What I like to do is take the motherboard model number and look up the supported processors on the manufacturer website, especially motherboards from Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, Intel or AOPEN. They've got this information still available on their websites. The next issue is with the processor cooler. The regular Pentium 3 has the CPU die exposed, whereas the Pentium 3S has an integrated heat spreader, which does make it more robust, but it also makes it taller. This is an issue if you're using a regular Pentium 3 cooler as the increased height also increases the mounting tension and it is quite common that this can snap off the plastic hook on the CPU socket. So what can you do? You can take an existing Pentium 3 cooler and bend the mounting clip a little bit to reduce tension. I also recommend that you don't use coolers with a single hook but go for one of those that have three hooks on both sides. This will spread the load a little bit and put less force on each individual plastic clip. The best option, however, is going with a cooler that lets you adjust the tension with a screw. The one I use is from Arctic Cooling, the Copper Silent 3. Not only is this a great cooler and very quiet, it has a screw that lets you adjust the tension, which is perfect for the Pentium 3S. And finally, let's talk about pricing. The regular Pentium 3 with the Copper Mine Core is readily available and quite cheap. For me on eBay Australia, the cheapest one is listed for 16 Australian dollars shipped coming out of Germany with more than 10 in stock. The Pentium 3S 1.4 GHz, however, has a cheapest listing of 46 Australian dollars coming from Canada. And the next cheapest listing is from South Korea for 62 Australian dollars. There are cheaper ones showing up in the US for around 25 Australian dollars, but with shipping, they also end up costing around 60 Australian dollars. So the processor will cost you quite a bit more, but then you also got to find a suitable motherboard and cooler. So once again, this is a product that has a larger price premium than it delivers in extra performance. But having said that, there is more to owning such a component than pure performance. It is difficult to put a price on such an iconic part and these end of era type parts, well, they will always command a premium that is beyond what it delivers in performance. So is the Pentium 3S 1.4 GHz worth it? When it comes to performance, absolutely. It is significantly faster than the regular high-end Pentium 3 processors. Now, as for the higher price to get this processor, a suitable motherboard and a cooler, well, this is something everyone needs to decide for themselves. Personally, I think it's absolutely worth it. The prices aren't out of control yet, like with 3FX Voodoo or Gravis ultrasound cards, and prices will only keep going up. But that's just my opinion. What do you think about the Pentium 3S 1.4 GHz, the performance, prices, and is it worth it? Share your thoughts down below in the description. And that's it for this video. If you found it interesting, why not subscribe and click on that notification bell. Give it a like or dislike and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.